The Avid CNC rotary axis is an exciting way to add a fourth dimension to your work. You can use it to fixture and spin a variety of materials. It can act as an advanced lathe or an indexer that will allow you to create interesting 3D shapes not possible on a three-axis machine. For years, our users have been creating all kinds of exciting rotary projects on their machines using our fourth axis. Our new EX control system not only supports the rotary axis, but brings some advanced setup and calibration features that make using the rotary even easier than it was before. In this video, I'll walk you through enabling the rotary axis on EX systems, locating it on the table, calibrating it for accuracy, and even showing you how to save the rotary location so it's easy to recall after setting up. Stick around to learn how to do it all, and soon you will be able to create all kinds of exciting fourth axis work yourself. This video assumes that you have your rotary physically mounted to your machine. If you need to do that, we have another video available that'll show you how to mount it, and there are excellent instructions on our support site that you can look up. Once you have it mounted, come back to this video to learn how to set it up with your EX control system. So let's talk about what we're gonna do in this setup process. We're gonna start by telling the control where the rotary is in the table and which direction it's pointed. This is important for getting the motor to spin the correct way. We'll also use a series of calibration steps to determine if the rotary is skewed uh, or not parallel uh, with the axis. And we'll go through a guided process where you will be helped in leveling the rotary so it's parallel with your gantry. Finally, we'll locate the XYZ origin of the rotary so that you can recall it later. For our first step, we'll go into CNC 12, click on Utility Menu, and then click on Acorn Wizard. After a few moments, the Acorn Wizard will load up, and in the left side, look for the Accessories menu, and then look for a selection called Rotary and Dual Use. For Dual Use mode, click the drop-down and click 3-axis with Rotary. You'll have four radio buttons you can choose from, and as you click the radio buttons, the graphic will update showing you where the rotary is located on the table. In particular, it's going to show you which direction the chuck is pointing. And this is important because this dictates the way that the motor will spin. So you can see that illustrated in this graphic here. In this graphic, you can see that the chuck is on the left side and the workpiece is spinning clockwise. If we reverse the chuck, we want the piece to still spin clockwise, which means in certain setups, your motor will be reversed, but your workpiece will be spinning the same direction relative to the cutting tool. So it's important to get this setting right because it simplifies your cam setups and prevents any mirrored cuts from happening. Next, we're gonna to wanna to double check that the chuck probe diameter is correct. This should be 0.630 inches in Imperial and about 16 millimeters in metric. And this is the diameter of the probe that we're gonna to use to calibrate the location of the chuck. The next feature, unwind rotary at the start and end of a job, uh, we recommend turning on. And what this will do is if you're doing a long rotary job that winds up the axis far past 360 degrees, this will prevent a long unwind at the beginning of the next job. At the beginning of your next job, your degrees of rotation will be set to a number that is at or under 360 degrees without physically moving the rotary. Now that we have those options set up, we're gonna find whether or not the rotary is parallel to an axis, level with the gantry, and we're gonna locate the origin of the rotary. We'll determine all of this in CNC 12 by going through a series of steps that will use the touch plate and the calibration rod that came with your rotary. This will feed all of the information back into the controller and help us calculate, store, and account for the position of the rotary on your table. To start off the process in CNC 12, you're gonna to wanna to go to Set Part Zeros, click on Rotary, and then click on Spatial Calibrate. This is gonna kick off the Spatial Calibrate routine. After starting the routine and going past the welcome messages, the first instruction you're gonna get is to place the touch plate in the touch plate holder on the rotary and to slide that with the tailstock holder as close to the chuck as possible. So when you put the touch plate in, make sure it's firmly pressed in place and make sure the tailstock is close to the chuck like you see here. Next, you're gonna get asked to put in a drill rod or calibration rod into your spindle. This should have come with your rotary kit. Make sure it's firmly installed in the spindle and ready to go. If your touch plate has a magnet, make sure it is magneted to your collet. 
Next, you're going to want to jog the machine so that the drill rod is above the touch plate. You can jog the tool around with your pendant or your keyboard, and what you want to do here is get that calibration rod roughly centered over the top of the plate and about an inch over the top of it. Once it's there, press cycle start and the first probing routine will commence. It's going to tap the top of the plate and then it's going to go tap the side of the plate. Once it's done with that first probe, CNC12 is going to ask you to move the touch plate and the tailstock as far away from the four jaw chuck as possible and lock it in place. So here you can see I'm disconnecting the magnet and I'm sliding this just about as far as I can get it down uh, opposite of the four jaw chuck. Now you're going to get a very similar prompt from CNC12 asking you to jog the bit or the drill rod over the top of the plate, get it uh, roughly in the center and about an inch over the top. Make sure your magnet is connected to your collet, and once it is, go ahead and press cycle start and a very similar probing routine will take place. Once this probe is done, you're going to get a notification from CNC12 that it's going to want to move to the middle of the rotary and do another probe. When you're ready, disconnect the magnet, press cycle start, and the machine will move to the middle. You're going to want to move the touch plate underneath the drill rod and reconnect that magnet. Then press cycle start one more time to probe the middle. So at this point in the process, the machine knows two things. It knows if the rotary is not perfectly aligned with an axis. It also knows if it's not level. Now the angle is accounted for in software, which we'll talk about more later, but in the next steps, the software is going to help you get the rotary level with your gantry. If your rotary is perfectly level, you're going to see this message. If your rotary isn't perfectly level, you're going to see this message, and you'll be guided through the process of leveling it. To start the leveling process, the machine will move down to the far end of the rotary. You're going to get a message that's going to remind you to make sure that the touch plate is underneath the drill rod and that you have your magnet connected to the collet. Then you'll be prompted to press cycle start, and the machine will take a measurement of where the touch plate currently is. It'll then tell you how high or low your rotary needs to be moved. In this case, we need to raise it about 0.09 of an inch. You'll want to make these adjustments by loosening or tightening the jack screws at the middle of the rotary and by the tailstock. You can leave the screws of the four jaw chuck tight. Go underneath your rotary and loosen up the jam nuts and get an Allen key and raise or lower the set screws uh, to compensate for the amount that you're off. After making that adjustment, you can press cycle start and the machine will reprobe the touch plate. It will then show on the screen how close you are to getting it level. In this case, I got it as close as I'm going to get it. I'm pretty satisfied with that, so I'll press cycle start and I'll say number two that I don't want to make another adjustment. If you didn't get it right on the first try, you can say one for yes and you can keep making as many adjustments as you want until you get it to a satisfactory location. After you're done leveling, you'll get a message that says, now it's time to find the XYZ location of your rotary. This is the step where we find the actual origin of the rotary. You'll start this process by moving the touch plate and the tailstock uh, as close as you can get it to the four jaw chuck. Jog the spindle with the drill rod over the touch plate and make sure you connect your magnet to your collet so you get good conductivity for the first probe. After pressing cycle start, the machine will do a quick probe to the touch plate. Next, you're going to be asked to put the calibration rod into the four jaw chuck. Your calibration rod should have come with a plastic sheath that goes on it, and this is important to have installed as it isolates that calibration rod from grounding to the machine frame. Put that in the four jaw chuck and snug it down so it's firmly in place, but not so tight that you're crushing that plastic sheath. Take the red wire and connect it to your touch plate and uh, make sure it is properly stuck to the brass portion of the plate. And then make sure that you have the blue wire connected to your collet. Carefully jog the machine so that the drill rod is just over the top of the calibration rod. When it's there, go ahead and press cycle start and you'll see that the machine is going to go through a series of touches to determine exactly where the center line of your rotary is. In the next step, it's going to ask you to jog away from the four jaw chuck. Doing this is going to set where you want the origin 
of your rotary to be. And you're going to want to move your machine far enough away that if you're doing a deep cut into a piece of material, your dust shoe or your collet won't contact the four jaw shock. When you're satisfied with where your rotary origin is, press cycle start and you'll get a message that says, great, your rotary is fully calibrated. Now that you have your rotary calibrated, you can use the rotary recall feature to get your XYZ0 to your rotary origin whenever you want. This is a straightforward process that uses the touch plate in your rotary and a tool in your spindle to find the XYZ location. To start the process, go to Set Part Zeros in CNC 12, click on Rotary, and then find the button marked Recall Calibrate and click it. You'll see a message that pops up that reads Warning. This will overwrite your current WCS with the rotary position and angle. What this is saying is that your current XYZ0 is going to be overwritten by the rotary XYZ0. If you do use multiple work coordinate systems, you can switch to another one and the rotary position will be written to whatever your active work coordinate system is. The next note is reminding you that you need to use an accurately measured tool. This means whatever tool in your spindle needs to be touched off to the tool height setter prior to using it for setting up your rotary XYZ0. You can do that by doing a manual tool change. Next, you'll be asked to make sure that your touch plate is in the tailstock holder and to jog the bit about an inch over the plate. When you're there, you can go ahead to press cycle start to proceed and you'll see the bit will touch down on the plate and then after it's made a series of two touches, it will rise back up and ask you if you want to press cycle start to move to the rotary origin. Before moving, you'll also get this warning that says rotary home set and it'll say note, the Z height is set to the center line of the rotary. If you wish to zero to the surface of an object, make sure to do that before you run your job. After pressing cycle start, your machine is gonna move over to X, Y, zero, but the Z is gonna be a positive number. Here you can see it's a little over four inches, indicating that the tip of the bit is four inches above the center line of the rotary. In some setups, you may get this angle indication next to your X axis. What this means is that an angle has been applied to your coordinate system to account for your rotary not being perfectly parallel to your axis. This angle was detected during the rotary calibration. And that's it, your rotary is now set up and ready to use. If you have any further questions, please go to our user forums or our support site. Thank you very much and happy making.